Hello, hello, and welcome again to a Beatles show that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we talk about what's happening in the news with the Beatles, and there's always plenty of things going on, and that's what this show is all about. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, and some of you know me for another Beatles show that's syndicated around the world called Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by the man who writes for the leading Beatles news site on the Internet, that being Beatles Examiner, and that's Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. On today's show, we're going to be talking about something that is coming out right about this time, and this is actually a very exciting time for Paul McCartney fans because uh, the remasters for Venus and Mars and Wings at the Speed of Sound are coming out on November 4th. But right before that, we have the deluxe version of Paul's album, New, which came out last year. It's the one-year anniversary of New. And now there's a brand-new deluxe set that has just come out, and we are here to talk about that. And uh, the set, for, for those of you that don't know, apart from having the actual album that came out, includes a CD of bonus audio, which we'll talk about, plus a DVD of material of almost two hours of material. And uh, so, Steve, let's talk about, uh, first of all, uh, the bonus audio and well, uh, what you thought of it. The bonus audio is um, relatively short. There's not a lot there. But uh, the first track is Struggle, which was the Japanese-only um, track that got released uh, at the time the album got released a year ago, which, you know, at the time I wasn't uh, – I mean, it was kind of a – take it or leave it track for me and it still isn't anything I mean, I mean it still doesn't excite me as much as the other tracks on the album but I'm glad that we finally get it we probably should have gotten it in the beginning but I'm glad we're getting it now then comes the two outtakes Hell to Pay and Demon Dance which are really the probably the biggest attractions on this whole set even though it's just two tracks uh, I think a lot of people are going to be buying this just for this. And then there, there's um, uh, four live uh, tracks taken from the album of uh, Save Us, New, Queenie Eye, and everybody out there uh, that were recorded in Tokyo last year. And it's the same four tracks he's been doing live just about everywhere in the U.S. So anybody that's gone to his shows has heard these. But, the, the, you know, the big deal is the three studio tracks here. And um, I... You know, like I said, Struggle is kind of a take it or leave it track for me. It's, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not great. Hell to Pay is fantastic. And Hell to Pay, I really, you know, is one of those tracks you really wish they could have subbed out one of the other tracks and put that in because it's so good. It really, really is. Demon's Dance is doesn't quite get up to the level of Hell to Pay, in my opinion. It's not bad, but Hell to Pay is just absolutely awesome. I, I really, really like that. And the quality, of course, on the live tracks is wonderful. What do you think? First of all, Struggle is one of those songs, and, and we both commented on this when we first heard the song and when we were talking about the album when it was released. I mean, Struggle has leaked out around the world. You can always hear it on the Internet anyway. You can hear it on YouTube. But Struggle is uh, a song that I feel is more of the experimental nature of Paul's, and it's something that could have fit very easily on the Fireman uh, right. release of Electric electric arguments, uh, as well as a lot of the more electronic-sounding McCartney songs from Press to Play and some of what he's done, the more of the experimental stuff that Paul has done, say, on, uh, I don't know, McCartney 2 or whatever. That's what I think of for a song like Struggle. It's okay. It's I happen to like it a lot. Um, yeah. I like when Paul when Paul steps out and does experimental stuff, and there are people who prefer the more commercial the more mainstream um and uh i like when paul does all that kind of stuff something like appreciate on the new album is is very much in that style as well to me i kind of put them all in the same category i think appreciate's a better song than struggle and and but uh like i said struggle struggle is okay you know it's clearly an extra song it's just not i don't think it's to the I don't think it's to the level of appreciate, do you? Um, probably not, but I think it's certainly worthy of release. You know, that's the thing about all music is that, and and I always bring this up, it's very hard to make an assessment 
of a song or an album after a few listens. I've listened several times to the new songs, and I like them, but my first impression when I heard Hell to Pay, as much as I do like the song, as well as Demon's Dance, is I can see why it was left off the album. You really? Know, I, I, my first impression was it's not as strong as most of the songs on the album. However, you know, after I listened to it many times over, I like it more and more. But, you know, just on first impression, which you should never go by, ever. <laughs> right. Uh, there have been times when I've listened to a lot of the bonus tracks that Paul has put out through the years, and some of them I have been completely baffled why they were left off albums. Some of the songs, especially when you're talking about and this is the one album that's most notorious for this, Off the Ground. So many of the songs from Off the Ground that he, that he released as bonus tracks on CD singles, to me, were much better than what was on the album. But right. then there are songs that he's put out on, on the CD singles, say some of the stuff from uh, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard, where I felt that the songs weren't as good as what was on the album, so I can understand that. And I'm grateful that he, he found a way to release it somehow, whether it's a B-side of a single or a CD single, or um, now in the deluxe version of new. I'm grateful that these songs come out, and there's no telling how further into the future I might find some of these songs. I do like Hell to Pay a lot because of the edginess of the song, and I right. like the screaming vocals that he has in there. And It's a, it's a catchy song. Demon's Dance is more kind of cute, very piano-based, but I do like it. It may take a while to grow on me. It's It's still too soon. I'm glad that it's out there. I'm still curious about Secret Life of a Party Girl, which oh, right. still hasn't okay. come out. But, um, yeah, I do like the fact that these songs are on there, and they're a major attraction for me. Anytime there's new songs, I don't call them outtakes. To me, they're unreleased songs. An outtake to me is really a, an alternate take of a song that yeah. already exists. But, I, you know, for new songs, it's still too soon to judge. But I like them. I'm glad they're out there. But I, I, on, on an early listen, I can see why he didn't put them on there. I disagree with you. I think uh, Hell to Pay would have fit in perfectly. I, I, I do. I think uh, Hell to Pay would have been an excellent choice for the album, and I'm sorry it's not there. Um, well, let's, uh, just say, let's just say, would you, would you rather it had Hell to Pay and everything else, or would you have taken something off new? I probably would have taken something off. I don't, I, what, don't ask me what. But I'm just saying, I think Hell to Pay would have fit in, in there very nicely. I think uh, Hell to Pay is a great song. And I think, you know, to uh, I, I just, I really liked it. I was very impressed by it. And I was, I mean, it it, it worked perfectly. Like I said, it fit, in, it fit in nicely with the rest of the album. And I think it would have would have been really good to, to have originally rather than, than, I don't know. It's hard for me to... To pull off one, I don't know, on my way to work, maybe, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's something like that. Alligator, I don't know. Oh, but, I love alligator. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just throwing out, you know, it's it's hard to say. But uh, I really thought Hell to Pay was, would have fit in well. Yeah. Well, that's uh, a very, it's a very interesting aspect of Paul McCartney's solo career. Many people, so many of his fans would say that there are real gems that Paul for whatever reason, has put out as B-sides or bonus tracks on CD singles, and you're left banging your head against the wall saying, why would this be a B-side or, or, you know, chucked away as something that didn't... Sometimes it may just be the feel of the album, and, and uh, Paul might think that it doesn't fit, you know, the style of the album in his mind, for whatever reason. You know, it's kind of like, if you go back, I know this may be a, a big detour here from this this conversation, or it may not make as much sense, but a lot of people wondered when Back to the Egg came out, why wasn't Goodnight Tonight on there? And Paul thought of it as a single only, and when you think about it, stylistically, it doesn't fit uh, the sound of Back to the Egg. There are times when an artist feels that, you know, he's got this whole batch of material, what are his best songs in his mind, and what fits the, the feel of the album? So, for whatever reason, he chose not to put those two songs on there. Well, three songs with Struggle. So, um, But I'm glad that they're out. As long as there's an outlet somehow for this to come out, I'm, I'm happy for it. So It should be, it should be mentioned that uh, Hell to Pay has the band on it, um, where right. uh, Demon's Dance is just him. So, right. But I, I, again, I, uh, 
you know, I don't know that I, I, I don't want to, you're looking at it as bonus tracks, which kind of infers that they are somehow inferior. I'm not doing that. I'm taking them as equals because he recorded them at the same time. And, you know, my, my argument is that Hell to Pay would have, would have fit in great on the album. It would have been. Well, first of all, you're wrong when you say that I'm looking at them as inferior. Because throughout Paul's solo career, like I was talking about off the ground, there are songs that he's released as bonus tracks on CD singles that are just as good as songs that were on the album, if not better. So just because they're bonus tracks doesn't mean that they're lesser quality. I'm saying that they're bonus tracks because they're bonus because they're not on the actual album. Okay. I mean, if, if, but but again, I'm considering those tracks as part of you know, as part of the album and saying that they would have worked very nicely or at least, okay. at least hell to pay would have worked really nicely. Um, so does that I, mean that every time that Paul has released an album and there's all these songs that he's chosen not to put on the album, but he's released it, as we said, besides uh, bonus tracks on CD singles, you look at all those songs as being part of one album. Not necessarily. In this particular case, though, uh, like I said, Hell to Pay fit in perfectly. Good Night okay. Tonight is, a, is a, Good Night Tonight is clearly different. Good Night Tonight would not have would not have worked. I mean, that's pretty obvious. I'm um, just making a point, you know. And okay. it's 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 tough sometimes to get inside an artist's head. There are times when there's reasoning behind how the way he feels, and the fans may not see it the same way. Right. But he has the right to think that way as the artist. So for whatever and, reason, he chose not to put those songs on new when they first came, when the album first came out. And and we have the right to say, Paul, you should have put it there. So <laughs> there there you go. There you go. Anyway. All right. I mean, that's, so, that's, that's, that's yeah. what we do. That's what we critics do. We, you know, we're a pain in the side to, to artists sometimes. So, well, the thing is, in, in my case, I always try to see both viewpoints. Oh, I do, I do, I do too. But again, you know, that's that's what opinions are for, you know. If, and there will be plenty of speculation after these tracks get out, or after the after these things pop up in the stores from people who hear them and say, "This was, should have been in the album. This shouldn't have been on the album." And blah, you know, and it'll go. I mean, you know, as well as I do, the internet is full of that, especially on Facebook. And there will be a lot of discussion about these about these two tracks a lot. Okay. So, All right. So let's move on and talk about the DVD, which has a lot of material on there. It's uh, made up basically of the Something New documentary, which aired uh, many months ago, around the time of its release, mm -hmm. um, on the making of the album. And uh, we had even commented, I think we might have even done a show on just that documentary. And in addition to that, uh, you've got the videos that were made for some of the songs on the album, plus the making of some of those videos. And also there's a part in there that's all about the promotion of the tour. And you get to see some of the many appearances that Paul made. And there's also uh, an interview that was on uh, a program called the living room tour that Paul did. I don't remember the name of the guy who interviewed him, but uh, the artists are, are listed as Bang and Olufsen. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember watching that interview, actually, when it was online, right after Paul had done the interview. They made that interview possible on the show's website, and I watched it, and I thought it was a terrific interview. But um, your thoughts about the DVD in general? Um, in general, I thought uh, it could have been much better. Um, I love the Something New program. I'm very glad they put that on, complete on there because that was a great show. Mm -hmm. I was very, I was extremely disappointed that the all the clips were reduced to two minute clips. So, for anybody who doesn't know, you're talking the, about the, the the promotion part. The promotion part, yeah. All the clips, okay. the Jimmy Fallon, the Hollywood Boulevard with Jimmy Kimmel, the Times Square, the BBC, the London Studios with Graham Norton. All that stuff is, is like two minutes long. And right. that really, really does a disservice. I mean, I was hoping at least the Hollywood Boulevard thing would be there complete. That would have been great to have. Mm -hmm. One of those, One of those should have been complete, and it's not. None of them are. 
even the Bang and Olufsen thing isn't complete. As much as I and I have, but I have to say that it's a, it is a good interview. What's is there in there? And the two times when he picks up the guitar and and strums are absolutely dynamite. Mm-hmm. But boy, watching all those clips disappear and you know re-edited and and you know disappear in two minute uh, segments was really a disappointment. Really a disappointment. Um, as far mm-hmm. as the music the music videos go. You know, if you've seen the music videos, you've seen those. I don't particularly like appreciate, but you know that um, that's neither here nor there. The, the making wait, of wait, 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 wait a minute, wait. You don't like the video for appreciate, or you don't right. like the song? I don't like the video. The the robot thing bothers me like crazy. <laughs> Why? I really, I just I don't like it. I really don't. I I I just didn't like it, and I and the making of appreciate I didn't like either. I just that video just didn't work for me just didn't work um, okay but i want to understand why other than you just don't like it because it, it just looks bad doesn't it's a concept that didn't make sense you know they were trying to be artsy and and it really you know trying to use in the robot and everything like, and and uh and and i was also i also kept thinking about the fact that that he was going to use the robot in japan and of course never got around to that and they didn't use it over here um, that was the robot was going to was going to be on stage, mm-hmm. and that never and that never happened. But you know that was kind of that that the whole robot thing just didn't make it just didn't work. It really didn't. I didn't think it was a good idea. I thought it was I thought it was lousy. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, you know what, what am I? What do you want me to say? It's, it, it was a terrible idea. It didn't work. It's in uh, in your mind. It was a terrible idea. Well, okay. If you like it, you can like it. But I, I, I don't think I'm the only one that, that didn't like that idea. I'll bet you a lot of people will, will would agree with me. I'm, you know, probably a lot of people listening agree with me. The making of things again were edited down. Um, I would have loved to have seen that full jam session that they showed online for early days. That was really wonderful. And uh, again, they there are clips in there. Um, it's not. I don't remember how long it is. The making. Of, I don't know how long the. Or, I don't remember how long the making of is on there. But it's not thirteen. It's not the full thirteen minute jam session. That's for sure. We we won't talk about the making of appreciate the Queenie. I think I thought was great. <laughs> I thought the Queenie. Yeah. I think was great because he's talking. They're in Abbey Road Studios. He's talking about stories in Abbey Road Studios, and and the whole thing is about you know about the Beatles working in Abbey Road. And I thought that was wonderful. That was mm-hmm. that was fantastic, but I mean I'd have to give the, the DVD overall a C. Um, you know it's got some great st- stuff, it's got some stuff that isn't so great. So there you go, your turn. Okay, uh, I agree with most of what you had to say. Uh, first of all, the interview, the Bang and Olufsen interview, which I have seen several times. I watched it when it was available on the internet. It was about a half hour long, and it was a really strong interview. And actually, when you've got a very powerful interview, when you have an interview that I think is really strong, I kind of hope that the whole thing would be in there. And like you said, I think it's edited really well. They're good sound bites for individual songs. But overall, I think when I, I really appreciate a good interview. And right. I'm not one of those people that likes everything to be edited down, even though in this case, like I said, it's edited well. I would have rather have had the entire interview. That's me. And also, everything that you said about the promotional tour. I mean, Paul went gangbusters promoting this album. And so many of the performances that he did were absolutely wonderful. Like you said, Jimmy Kimmel, you know, to do uh, like a full show practically. It was almost, I think it was almost an hour. You know, right. and uh, the material on Jimmy Fallon and uh, playing in Times Square and also in London. You know, there are a lot of really great performances there. You you do run the risk of being extremely repetitious because he played the same four songs from New over and over wherever he played. But on those other occasions when he did far more than those four songs, when he would give you, like on Jimmy Fallon, I think it was eight songs. You know, the other songs that he did would have made really great material to have. 
as bonus material, whether they're Beatles songs or solo songs or whatever. It would have been nice to have something to represent that instead of what I consider to be really snapshots of each of these events. When you consider the fact that he really did so much to promote it, it would have been great to have a lot of that live material. And those four bonus songs that we have on the CD for the same four songs from New, they do sound great. Okay, that's an example of how great the band sounded and how Paul sounded doing those songs. It's a good representation of that. But if you want to see it visually, there's so many opportunities that you had there throughout all of these appearances. And even some of them were even the studio recordings that were snuck in. They weren't even live. Right. And I was shocked about that. Something like the, I like the fact that they mix in a little bit of behind the scenes stuff, backstage, whatever. Paul talking about the iHeart radio festival this is the first time that he's doing his new material live he's also commenting about this is not his you know the regular audience that goes to see him you know little things like that he says he's a little bit nervous i like a little i like to see something like that but then when you get to the performance you either don't get the the live performance itself it's either the studio recording or you get everything edited down you don't even get a full song right so, you know, that part of the DVD is very disappointing. You know, it's really um, a very slickly produced, you know, I, don't, I didn't time how long the, the promo tour bit ran, but, um, you know, it's kind of like a documentary in a way. And I, I personally prefer, after all these years, when it comes to Paul's performances, just show the performances. You don't really need to do more than that. There's no better way to promote your music, and in this case, the new album, than showing him doing it live. I like the bootleg, um, you know, the the bootleg uh, theory where you just show things and you don't, you know, you don't worry about leaving stuff out, which of course you couldn't possibly have done. But for example, you could have put the entire Jimmy Kimmel Hollywood Boulevard performance, not necessarily the the rest of it, but you could have put the performance in there. I thought the Fallon stuff was really stiff. Fallon was really nervous. He, I mean, he really, I mean, I could, you could have left that off completely as far as I'm concerned. Um, no, but the performance of Paul on Jimmy Fallon, you could have put something in there. Yeah, I suppose. I'm but talking the, about the songs, not the comedy bits. Okay, no, I am too. I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't really, I don't care about the comedy bits. Jimmy Kimmel Hollywood Boulevard thing was, fan, was you know, I mean, that was an, an event to get yeah. out there on Hollywood Boulevard in the middle of the day. And 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 do that, or I should say later in the day, because it was actually closer to five o'clock. Um, that was really a spectacular event, and to not include that, or include something like that, they did put a little bit of Times Square, they did put a little of the others, but again, we're only reduced to little short clips of these things, and it's really kind of unfair. It would have been nice to have one of them complete, rather than mm -hmm. have none none of them, and that's again, you know. Uh, you know, you feel like I do that that was a little disappointing and it's too bad that they couldn't do that. As far as the, the Bang & Olufsen interview, again, I mean, that I would have loved to have seen the whole thing of that, too. I'm glad mm. they put the whole something new in there because that was great. I mean, you got to hear from all the band, which you don't normally hear, you know, and you got to hear and you got to, you know, see little recording studio footage. But, you know, and, and I'm really glad that they didn't mess with that but i really wish they had not met, i mean maybe put two dvds in there and you know gone a little longer and give given a little more that would have been that would have been nice but mm -hmm. you know what can what can you say um yeah. what did you think what did you think of the your comments about the music videos and and especially appreciate sounds like you disagree with what i said well it's it's just a matter of i like the fact first of all in this day and age Videos are not that important anymore. <laughs> you know, no, they weren't, they weren't what they, going back to the MTV era, people don't care that much about videos. And the mere fact that, you know, when it comes to Paul, he does a variety of videos. He might do a real simple one, which just takes a lot of, uh, you know, editing of Paul on stage mixed with audience reaction, mixed with backstage footage and that kind of thing, which is fairly simple. But then he'll take some time and do something like Appreciate or Early Days, which, is, which are far more artistic videos, when he doesn't even have to. 
I mean, yes, mm-hmm. he has the luxury being Paul McCartney. He could do whatever he wants to. But the fact that he takes the time to even in, invest time in his videos and to do something artsy. And, yeah, I, I didn't really understand the concept of appreciate, of the song appreciate with what was put into it. But the whole storyline of how that whole thing developed was very interesting and how Paul wanted to, to have a video. He thought of um, the album cover as having a robot around him, you know, you know, to put his arm around him kind of thing. And then that right. developed into this video, which is a combination of a robot and puppet. And then the whole concept of it being in a museum and really the, the robot, the robots control the world at that time. And these are all artifacts of the past that you see in this museum of humans going back to several decades and all. Right. That's kind of interesting. You know, in some ways, I didn't get that when I was watching the video. It's explaining to me what the video is all about. And so I liked that, and I liked uh, the interviews that they showed with the different directors that were involved with it and the decisions that, that, that were made. I like the fact that, you know, on something like this, on a DVD, you have the luxury of not only putting the video on, but putting the making of on, which right. I'm sure some people haven't even seen. So between that and early days, which, you know, when you when you watch the making of early days and you you also there's some things there I didn't I hadn't seen before, actually, in the making of where Paul <laughs> pulls out his first guitar and he starts to sing. I lost my little girl. And that's the, this, the first guitar he ever owned. What a cool thing that is to put in the making of of early days. I, I but, think that I think that was in the 13 minute clip that they that they threw out uh, on his website. Okay, yes, I, that was, I thought that was really, you know, that was a very cool thing to watch. But apart from that, the whole idea in the storyline of it taking place in the 50s in Mississippi, and instead of, since the song is supposed to relate to Paul and his relationship with John in the early days of their friendship, mm-hmm. instead there's the parallel of two African-American boys in their teens, and they form a band, and then they have three, uh, a third and fourth person to join the band. And then there's also a funeral in there. Which makes you there's there's the parallel of John losing his mother, and one of those two boys suffers a death. I think it it might have been the mother of one of the boys, but I never thought about that until it was explained in the making of, you know. So the mere fact that a lot of time and effort was put behind doing this, plus having the jam session with the blues musicians, and I do agree with you when they recently put that on the internet and. You could see it was a half hour long of just pure blues and Paul hanging out with all these blues men and Johnny Depp, you know, and this whole thing, you know, the friendship between Paul and Johnny Depp. I don't know how that whole thing started, really, but he's been in several of Paul's videos now and they're kidding with each other that, you know, Paul Paul's doing this for Johnny because he can't find work, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, to have that back and forth between the two of them is kind of cute. And... um you know, I, I I enjoyed, to me, the highlights of the DVD are definitely the videos and the making of and the Something New documentary. And the Something oh. New documentary, I just want to say, because we did talk about this when it first aired, is really, it it's so, that could have existed by itself on DVD. Sure. The only problem I have with that documentary is that it's too short. And I remember right. when it was on television and it was on, I think, Palladia, it might have been, VH1 Classic. Even with commercials, it didn't run for an hour. The whole thing, right. I think, runs about 45 minutes. But right. the great thing about uh, Something New is that is, it is the best thing on this package to explain the album. Sure. Oh, yeah, it is. And I was going to make a comment. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, or I should say, I, I'm going to say it half seriously, is that Paul will turn up in the next Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> can you imagine Paul and Keith Richards together in Pirates of the Caribbean? Wouldn't that be? Uh, wouldn't that you be never cool? know. You might. You never, that would be. That would be. That would be cool. That would be uh, fantastic. And they are. They are. They have already announced that there will be another one. So, oh boy, we can. We can hope. There's something to look forward to. But I'll bet. I'll bet can, Paul has a lot of other things on his plate at the for the moment. So. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. But yeah. hey, Keith Richards was in the fourth one, and he was in there for like what two minutes. You know, so who knows? You never know. Uh, it's possible. It is possible. We can, but we can start. We can start a rumor. Okay, but the something new documentary for anyone who hasn't seen it, you should watch it because one of the best things about it, and you were just saying, Steve, is that you actually get to hear from the members of the band. 
Right. And just recently, it was made note of that this band has been with Paul longer than Wings was together. Right. Uh, and also, well, if you, you have to really go back to 57 with John and Paul through 1970, 13 years. Uh, it's pretty much the same amount of time. Of, of the whole Beatles story between John and Paul and then to the end of the Beatles. So they've been with Paul for quite a long time. It's not the same thing as a band that has been on every single one of Paul's albums and has played on all of his tracks, but they are significant in his story now and in his, his whole, you know, the history of Paul McCartney. Those right. guys now play a big part in, in his story. And so right. to have them finally speak, all of them represented, plus all the different producers that work with him. And it really, it gives you very good insight of what it's like to work with Paul. And most of all, and I know I commented on this when we talked about this documentary before, what blew me away was the fact that here he has these, these four producers who are much younger than him, and he's taking suggestions from them. You know, and it's got to be, I'm sure there are a lot of artists out there who are veterans who then have to work with younger people. And it's an interesting, it's interesting to see how, uh, the relationship is in that regard, because Paul has so much history, so much more experience, although you could say that the four producers that worked on New have a lot of experience as producers, but they have their own ideas, and Paul is very open-minded to hearing what they feel would work in a song. So that's just, it, it, um, it makes me admire him more and more. I mean, he can but work with nothing but people in his own age bracket, and, you know, the, the great producers who are still around from the past, he could still work with them. He's working with younger guys, younger right. producers, and it gives the album a very fresh sound. Um, and I, I just, uh, you know, have much more admiration for him because he's that open minded to other ideas from from younger people. And the, and the other thing that this whole package brings up, you know, is an issue that we've talked about before is why this album didn't you know, do better in the charts. You know, it still it still holds up. Um, and why it didn't, you know, why it didn't, uh, after all his promotion and all his work, give him more of a big hit on Billboard is still a, a big question. You know, still amazing. Well, but, we talked about that in detail. Yeah, right. On our, and, our past I'm, shows. And, and, and it's, you can go on for another 30 minutes talking about this. Right. But, you know, it's still... I, I, you know, a year later, I love this album, and I think it's one of the best that he's done. He's made a lot of great albums. This is another one of the great albums to me. But um, that's the sign of all art. You know, you don't really know the first time you listen to something how you're going to respond to it a year later, five years later, ten years later. Your your views could change, and that's how it should be. But I can tell you certainly the way I'm looking at it a year later, I love this album. And, you know, when I watch some of the stuff, especially every time I watch the Something New documentary, it makes me want to go back and listen to the album again. Because mm -hmm. I just love the variety that's on there, and I like the different styles of production on there. Right. There's a consistency, but then once you understand the way each song was approached, especially Ethan John's working with the acoustic songs, and also knowing you know, how involved Paul Epworth was in playing, uh, you know, in the idea behind Save Us, which really was kind of made up organically in the studio very quickly uh, between uh, Paul, Paul McCartney and Paul Epworth and that Paul Epworth was playing the drums and, you know, and, and uh, it's just the two of them playing all the instruments on that song. All that, you know, all the information that you process from learning about the album makes you appreciate the album even more. Right. I think a, a year later, the fact that it still holds interest for a lot of people, not just you know, diehard fans who would have been interested anyway, but the fact that it has a, you know, it still has something to it, um, something, you know, enjoyable, um, it says a lot. And I think, and, and it definitely does. And it's, and it's really, you know, it's really too bad that it didn't, t didn't do better than it did. It's, it's a great album. It still is a great album. So. Well, it's, well, a, str it's a struggle, no pun intended. It's a struggle uh -huh. for, most veteran artists to sell well in this day and age. True. So, uh, you know, a lot of it just has to do with the ever changing industry and how people listen to music and whether or not the audience that you grew up with still is going to spend money for any artist and oh. invest in their, in their latest music. You know, a lot of that all comes into play and it's, 
there is no clear-cut, easy way to explain it. It's a whole bunch of factors as to why certain artists, especially veteran artists, can't sell like they should, especially, and it's very frustrating, and it's not just Paul McCartney, as I've said before. There's a lot of great veteran artists of the past who are still putting out quality music that's not being heard and not being given exposure on the radio. And you also have to question, in this day and age, with the Internet becoming, I think, far more significant, you know, how important really is radio anymore in the success of a record. So, um, you know, that's a show to itself. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, we could, uh, I mean, but, but, I mean, looking at the, the latest Billboard 200 for November 1st, uh-huh. there, there are several veterans out there. Um, Bob Seeger is number three. Mm. U2, is, U2 is number nine. Tony Bennett is number 11 with Lady Gaga, of course. Right. Um, I'm sure that has something to do with that. I'm just running down. George Strait is number 32. So there are, and Led Zeppelin has been, uh, Jackson Brown is 35. Led Zeppelin's been all over the Billboard 200 recently because they're reissues. Um, and, and you know, uh, veteran artists are not totally excluded from. No, but, but also remember, new went as, as high as number three. So mm-hmm. you're talking about Bob Seger hitting number three. So did Paul. Mm-hmm. You know, and I also remember, I don't know if you if you have the top 200 in front of you, Barbara, Streisand's, Barbara Streisand's album, I think, went to number one. And it she's did. got such a very loyal fan base. And that that uh, that also comes into play. She's number five on the November 1st list. OK, so she's still she's still up there. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of I mean, I, I'm running down the list. Journey, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, John Denver, Eric Clapton, Fleetwood Mac, no Beatles this week in the in the Billboard 200, not one. Okay. Also, there's a distinction that you have to make between new music from an old artist, a veteran artist, and mm-hmm. remasters. There's a difference there. Right. And you know, based, I'm but, sure I'm sure that a Led Zeppelin remaster of one of their albums may sell a lot better than a new Robert Plant album. So mm-hmm. you know, you have to weigh that in too. Sure. Sure. I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of distinctions in there, but it's interesting that there's a lot of, there are a lot of veteran artists in this uh, week's uh, Top 200. The Beatles just aren't one of them, which is, which I have to say is unusual because I generally, I I do take a look at the Billboard 200 every week to to see what Beatles albums are there. And generally there are some, uh, and generally there are some somewhere. And this doesn't happen to be one of those weeks. At least the billboard charts that that I get that I can that I have access to. So um, it's 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 interesting. But they'll be back. There's no question about that. So all right. So that puts a wrap on this show. Uh, if you would like to comment about this program or any of our previous shows, you can always write to us at things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. And a couple ways you can get in touch with each of us individually. You can write to me at uh, everylittlething at att.net. And also you can check out my website at kenmichaelsradio.com and uh, look at my Facebook page. Friend me on Facebook under Ken Michaels. And if people want to get in touch with you, Steve, they can do so how? They can uh, catch me on my Facebook page, on my personal Facebook page. Um, I also have a Beatles news and commentary group that you can join and, and talk about uh, various news things. The show also has uh, both a group and a pay and a page. Um, things we said today, and you can you can join us there and, and talk about the show. We're always glad to hear from you uh, through uh, Gmail through the Gmail address. Uh, things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. So don't be afraid to. Talk to us and, you know, tell us what you think about what we've been talking about or if you have opinions that you'd like to uh, um, express, we'd love to hear. All right. So for things we said today, this is Ken Michael saying thanks to all of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying we hope you enjoy the uh, collector's uh, edition of New, and we will see you next time. (laughs) 